Uh, so are your Silicon Valley friends jealous that instead of your like retirement plan being a, a ridiculous sports car or endless rounds of golf or whatever it is, that you're like in Berlin and you know Korea, like playing guitar solos in front of screaming fans? Well, I you know I don't know. I think I get the impression that they're they're happy I'm doing it, but they're glad they're not doing it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it is a lot of work. Um, so one of the the pinnacles of of being a, a rock musician um, in America is that eventually you're honored with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Certainly, yeah. The Stooges were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame a few years ago. Yeah. And, and that was one of the few times, the first, one of the first times people had seen you with, in, in public as a member of the rock and roll community in many years. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was a great honor. And, and uh, we, we actually, that was our, the Stooges' seventh time to be nominated. And um, the thing about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is that there's a committee that are kind of like, um, you know, cooler. And they, they know stuff. And so the committee had nominated us seven times, but then there's a larger body that has to vote on you. And, um, and so seven years in a row, there were six, this was the seventh, they went, eh, you know, there was other people on the, bi uh, on the, ballot that, that they like better. And so uh, finally, in 2010, um, we got in. And uh, you know, it was, we were either going to have to get in or we were going to have to take pride in not getting in. And so uh, luckily, we got in. All right. So the, uh, after you were inducted, um, the Stooges played. And the first song you played was uh, Search and Destroy. Yeah. Do you want to maybe talk? Uh, we only have a few minutes, uh, yeah, but yeah. I think you want to talk a little bit about that. That's I, an iconic Stooges song that you wrote. I do, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I co-wrote this with Iggy. I wrote the music, and I thought that um, for those of you who, um, everybody know Search and Destroy? Okay. I, I thought that I, I would kind of um, deconstruct this song for you, if you will. Um, because it, it, you know, in, in starting to try to explain it, uh, the, um, uh, the, a lot of things occurred to me that I hadn't thought of before. I mean, obviously, n nobody is without influences in music. And, uh, I mean, there's the chromatic scale it only has 12 notes in it, you know, and that's the basis of almost all Western music. And the basis of all the music that I do, the pentatonic scale only has nine notes. So uh, you're bound to repeat some. And in fact, you're bound to repeat other people's some. Uh, so it, it's all differentiated by maybe just a little bit of rhythm here and there, or maybe just a little different nuance. So uh, the genesis of Search and Destroy was actually, uh, it was during the Vietnam War time. Um, and one day at band practice, I started goofing around, just kind of going like a machine gun, you know, from the Vietnam War. And so everybody kind of liked that. And we, uh, I took it home, and uh, you know this became like you know kind of um, right. You know that, that became that was the machine gun. You know turned into music. So um, so that's fine. And then I started thinking about it a little more, and actually that riff. Not all that different from another riff, which is you know it's, that's uh, you know, which is the 
adventurers walk, don't run. So I'm going, okay. Well, you know, I had listened to a lot of surf music, so I'm sure it was imprinted somewhere there, but I really had no conscious, you know, uh, uh, sort of influence from that, I guess. But, but then I thought I'd take it a little bit further. And, you know, if I think about the beginning of Search and Destroy, it's... <laughs> Right? Well, that's like... It's Jumpin' Jack Flash, right? So that's, that's I'm kind of going, okay, well, I didn't have any conscious, uh, uh, you know, as they'd say, nicking of that song, but I guess I must have. But again, it only, I only had nine notes to work with. So, so then, I, then I really found the ultimate insult, which is that actually the, um, the, the rhythm of the song is right? And you know, it turns out that that's a conga line dance. So it's like right it's the bunny hop and so so here it is so the an the the anthem of punk rock is based on the bunny hop <laughs> wow i think we've all learned a little more about the bunny hop and uh, search and destroy today uh i do we have any time no Time for just maybe one question. One question. There's a microphone in the center. Uh, if anyone has uh, one question, quick. How does it feel <laughs> to be awesome? Is that person related to you? Uh, no, no, actually. Excellent, excellent. No Very one good. that I know would ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I, you know, I, I don't feel that awesome uh, every day, but I. Um, I have all my, my wife and kids to remind me of that. <laughs> all right, here we go. We have the uh, final slide. And uh, just so you know, uh, James has been also been honored by the bobblehead uh, community. <laughs> so uh, if you press this uh, button, I think it actually plays a song, doesn't it? It plays, uh, it, well, the, you know, nor, as with any company, they don't want to pay any copyright. And so what they did was they, they got a recording from a live show of me kind of doing some nondescript thing, which is actually part of the solo in, in Raw Power, and, and they put that in there. So unless you really are a Stooges fan, you may not recognize that what comes out of that bobblehead, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, James Williamson, for this. It was My pleasure. such a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank very you, much. everybody. Come see the Stooges tonight.